It's an American motocross tradition. Red Fourth of July weekend at Red Bud. Red Bud! Red Bud! The thrills and excitement of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross is live on MAV TV. centerpiece of the 2018 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing. It's the Red Bull Red Bud National. I remember my first podium at, was at the GPs and I remember standing next to world champions and I was just I felt so honored to be there and it was such a relief. Here's your Lucas Oil race recap. Well you saw this Muscan and Barsha down in the first turn so they are basically last. Your leader is Blake Baggett. And he finds himself even further behind them soon because he goes literally flipping over the bars here, handing the lead to Eli Tomac. Tomac has a good solid lead. Ken Roxon makes up some ground, gets up into second, while Muscan starts moving through the field. Here's his pass on Bloss. That was impressive. At that time, that was third place. Yeah, Marvin was on rails. He was attacking this track no matter where he went, inside, outside. He found a way to get it done. And then who would have seen this coming? Tomac, an apparent mechanical, the rear wheel, you see it move, but then it seems to have locked up. So our points leader losing a whole host of points, but that opened the door up. The number 94, Kenny Roxon. I know a lot of people stoked to see the number 94 back on top. He's back from the arm injury and winning a race for the first time since the comeback began. Muscan salvages second after being down early. Bloss on the podium in third. Barsha Baggett, Nicoletti, Webb, Pike, Nichols, the Englishman, nice job in the top 10 ninth. And Justin Hill, didn't see much of him in this moto, quietly sneaks it into the top 10 for Auto Trader Yoshimura Suzuki. Tomac, by the way, here definitely did not crash. We did uh, find some footage. The bike stopped running. No crash for Tomac. Either way, doesn't finish this one. Here's the back of the top 10. Cunningham, Harrison, Miller. Pappy rounds out the top 20. Crazy day of racing here. Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross. We'll give you the Lucas Oil race recap from Redbud. This is the beginning of the day for Marvin Muscan. He crashes while running second. He and Justin Barr should get up in last and next to last. They would mount incredible charges in the back to salvage good finishes. And then we go into Moto2. They're now in position to potentially win the overall. Muscan gets the early lead, almost lands on Ken Roxon. They had a great battle. Roxon comes right back on Marvin after this action to retake the lead. Yeah, I don't think he appreciated that cross jump from Marvin, even though I don't think it was intentional. But Tomac would go down in that corner we just saw. So his bad day just keeps getting worse. So major struggles. He had to stop in the mechanics area to get the bike adjusted. He finished the race in ninth. Late in the race, Roxon's trying to catch Muscan for the lead, and then Justin Barsha appears on the scene. This is the final lap. Barsha puts on a big push. That same corner, he makes the move on Roxon to take over the number two spot. He got close, but couldn't get Muscan, who will go from down on the ground at the beginning of the day to winning the race. And that's pretty much the way this season has gone in Lucas Oil for a motocross. Expect the unexpected, and the Frenchman is on top for the first time in the 450 class at this race. Two in a row, though, in the series for him. Roxon finishes this race in third. Justin Hill, a great ride in the Suzuki in fourth. Bag at fifth. Tomac does lock down ninth. Barsha passed him in that moto. But Barsha, remember, that early crash in moto one only was able to get a fourth. So his 4-2 is edged by Roxon's 1-3. Muscan, of course, the overall win. Phil Nicoletti, solid performance by Filthy Phil for the day. He ends up in the top five overall behind Baggett. So major shakeup in the standings today with Eli Tomac having struggles. A lot of it out of his control in both of the motos. Series will have a weekend off before it resumes in Millville, Minnesota in two weeks. We'll see how well he can rebound there. Every one of these riders probably needs a little bit of recovery time, but especially Eli Tomac physically is okay, but this is a big blow. 32-point lead to a three-point deficit, Brad. Yeah, that, that, that really hurts as a racer. 
Um, like we said, some of it, you know, Tomac going down, yeah, you could say it was part of his doing, but, you know, he had a bad gate pick in that mechanical. You know that whole team is devastated, but that really makes things interesting going into the last five rounds. Absolutely, and Barsha makes up a whole bunch of ground as well. He's within 40, which means he's within one full day's worth of points. We're going to show you the Lucas Oil race recap, which is highlighted significantly by the Rocco's Leap and those leaps by Plessinger. Here he is trying to make moves on Forkner. This is for second with McElrath in the lead. And there is the pass on Forkner to get the number two spot. Really came down to which rider was willing to jump that thing. There's Plessinger again jumping it to take the lead from McElrath. So he goes from third to second to first using that jump. And later on, Forkner mounts a comeback, gets him in the same spot, and then this. Oh, yeah, just two lines that came together. Forkner didn't see it coming. He tried to shot off, but it was too little too late. And then his teammate, goes down well almost exactly in the same section a little cross rudder there through the whoops but it, this guy got it done yeah much needed moto victory for plessinger he's been okay at the last couple of races but hasn't won since high point four rounds ago so that was significant in the series standings especially because the rider second in the series alex martin despite a last ditch effort for the podium on the final lap ends up in fourth behind ferrandis and Hampshire, McElrath, Marchbanks, Nichols, Cooper, Moseman, and Jordan Smith round out the top 10. Chase Sexton, 11th in, I believe, what he would call his home race. Ryan Sipes filling in. He's on the uh, Rockstar Husky bike, normally ridden by Zach Osborne. 16th, so scoring some points for the team there. Good job, Sipes. Savachi does recover for 17th on the number 17th. Absolutely, but he does lose 12 points on the day to Plessinger. Finished behind him in both of the motos. Here's your Lucas Oil race recap. Great start. It's going to be Mitchell Harrison grabbing it on the Rockstar Husky. But the big story is this huge first turn crash. Claimed a bunch of riders, including RJ Hampshire, who had finished second in the first moto earlier today. Plessinger then makes short work of Harrison and everyone else to get the lead. You see Joey Savachi there in green near him. Same thing with Forkner. But man, once Plessinger had it, he was able to manage it. So then we shift to the battle for second, a good one between Faulkner and Martin GL. Yeah, Faulkner got to that inside, got a great drive up the hill, got around Martin. You heard him say it took a little wind out of his sails. Both riders riding great, great remount from Moto 1 for Faulkner, but no one had anything for the 23. No, he's going on to take the 1-1 one, one here. A lot to do for this guy. I believe the baby watch is about to start now that we're in the month of July. He and his fiance, so a lot happening in the Plessinger household and also carrying that red plate home as your series points leader as we go into a one weekend break. Here's the second mode of results, Forkner. Yeah, you're right, GL, great rebound for him. Finishing second, Arandis' string of second moto victories ends. Still a good ride, though, in fourth, past the body late. Sexton Cooper, Harrison, McElrath, and Bailey. Top 10 in that moto. A couple top 10s lately for Bailey, the rookie. We will show you how Ferrandis ends up uh, third overall for the day. That fourth in the second moto. Didn't even need that one. He had McElrath covered. Here's their points. Plessinger stretching it over Amart. These guys got a weekend off. What do they need to do, AC, to get some recovery in? I think I actually talked to Aaron Plessinger earlier. He yeah. said he had some coconut milk this week. Really? Is that the key? I think that's the key.